Oh, okay, no, no, no more, no more. That's no, fine. Okay, let's do it. Okay, we're on Mem Dalad and Mabez 44b, and we are at the first set of two dots, uh, about a quarter of the way down, third of the way down. First one line is the Scharag Largus Behema of Hargus Adam Potter. Okay, so the animal intended on killing an animal, and then it, en it ended up killing a person. So uh, this error exempts the animal from uh, skila, from the capital punishment. So the Gemara says, Hanes Chavan Lahargus says, Lahargus Ev Hargus Achayev. Okay. Uh, 44a. About a third of the way down at the two dots. In other words, um, no, not, not the mission before the mission. Hanes Chav, uh, first one on the line is Bechulu in brackets. See the brackets at the beginning of the line? Okay, now the mission gives a few examples where the animal intended on doing one thing and did something else. And all those animals, it's a different categories. So for example, the animal intended on killing a, an animal and it ended up killing a person. It intended on uh, massaging its back and it ended up uh, knocking the wool over and killing somebody. It wanted to kill a nafel. It ended up killing uh, a nafel is a, a child that wouldn't have lived 30 days. It ended, up, it ended up killing an adult. It wanted to kill a non-Jew and ended up killing a Jew. What happens if the animal had an intention on in killing Ruvain and end, it ended up killing Shimon? That's not listed in the Mishnah. The animal would still be chayef, because ultimately speaking, it had intention to kill. This, this disagrees with the opinion of Rav Shimon. Rav Shimon says, in this environment, you would be exempt from capital punishment if a human being did that. In other words, a human who intended on killing one person and ended up killing a different person, he's exempt. I'm sorry. Uh, one second. My time of Shimon, the Pro Shimon says the Pasik says, Hashar Yisakov, Vagamba all of you must. The animal will be stoned and also the owners would be killed. Now we, we explained previously, and we'll explain it later on, that this killing of the owner doesn't actually mean the owner is killed, it means the owner has to pay Kaifer. That's the next Pasik and Kaifer Yusha Salaf. Okay, but regardless, the point is, is that we say the laws of killing a uh, the, the laws of executing a man for a human for uh, for a crime he did. Also apply to a shara to an axe. Ma ba'alam adam mechavan le af shara adam mechavan le. Just like a a uh, human, he has to have intention who he wants to kill. So to an axe also has to have intention to kill a specific person. So the Gemara says ba'alam gufayim minale minalan. And how do we know that the original owner? That how do we know that a human has this exception that if he intends on killing one person and kills somebody else? Um, he is ex he's exempt from capital punishment. The Amakrov Aravla he planned against him, the Kamalov, and he killed him. Achiaskavanlay, he has to have intention, he has to premediate and kill the one who he intended on killing. And this is all the opinion of Rab Shimon. Rabban and Haiva the Aravlay Maya of Dilay. What did the Rabban do with this with this concept of Aravlay? In other words, it's required that you plan. In other words, that you have a certain amount of intention. What does that exclude? So this is the this is the equivalent of the modern day drive by shooting, right? You have a crowd of people, and the guy pulls out his gun while he's driving, or it's impossible to aim, and invariably he kills the wrong person. That's always the end of these stories. So a guy took a rock and he threw it into a crowd, with the intention of killing somebody, but he didn't realize who was going to. So the hey, me, what's the scenario? Let's say there were nine nine non-Jews and one Jew. The reason why you'd be exempt is because the majority were non-Jews. Even if there were 50-50, um, when we have a when we have a doubt with regard to killing somebody, the, the laws of the laws of execution and capital punishment were lenient, meaning we do not we do not execute. So therefore, even if if there were 50-50, we would not execute. The Mars says, 
There were nine Jews and one non-Jew. The Alpha God would be strong, and even the majority are Jews. Given the Kachat, can any Benayo have the Kavua of Chol Kavua Kamechta? Mechta Dami with Safik of Hashlag. Okay, because the the doubt here is a is a fixed doubt, right? There's one non-Jew and nine 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 Jews, and they're all in the same area. So therefore, we we consider we consider the the um the doubt the Suffolk, to be a 50-50 doubt. Why that is, we've spoken about this in the past. The laws of Kavua are a little complicated. Um, I'm not going to go through it now, but when the idea is when the minority is fixed and it's in position, and you go to the minority as opposed to the minority leaving and coming to you, then we don't. When we say it's fifty. It's considered as if it's fifty-fifty doubt, and therefore you'll also be exempt from capital punishment in this in this in this environment. Now, if there were all Jews, if all ten of them are Jews, you would be chayev according to the rabbis. So, even though you have no intention to kill mm-hmm. a specific person, you have intention to kill somebody, but not a specific person. Then, according to the according to the rabbis, that's sufficient to be executed. Why the difference in how this case is handled if it involves uh, Gentiles versus Yidden? The, the, Why the difference in how the law deals with it's it's it's, it's less severe. Why is it less severe? Why is it less severe? Because Torah considers the life of a Jew to be more valuable. Right. Shor Isha Simon. Shorha. Okay, so you have an, an ox of a woman, an ox of a of the orphans. Shorha Shorha Apotropis, the uh, ox of a of a trustee. This is very similar. Okay, so you have uh, one second. One second. Yeah, the acts of a, of a trustee is very similar to the acts of a of a um um uh, the acts of orphans. In other words, either the orphans themselves were managing the acts, or they gave it over to a trustee. Shor Hamidbar, a, a wild shor, shor hektish. A shor that belongs to uh, Hektish, shor hager, shemes, uh, the the ox of a convert that that dies, the ein la yarshim. One second. Yeah. Okay. So shor midbar is 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 effectively an ownerless ox. Shor Hektish is an ox, an ox of Hektish. Shor hager. Shemais the the ox of a convert who died without without inheritors. In other words, the fact that these ox is ownerless. Harei eluchayav and misa, all these oxen could be executed if they kill. In other words, even if even if the animal is ownerless. Rabbi Yehuda Imer Rabbi Yehuda says shor hamidbar shor hektish shor hager shemais peturim and misa the fish ain't handed by them. Rabbi Yehuda says no, you have to have an owner, and therefore the ox of a of the of the hektish of the temple fund or the ox of the convert that that passes away without inheritors or or the ox of uh, of a wild ox that has no owners, they're all exempt from capital punishment. Okay, let's explain here. So, so shor shor shiva. The word shor is repeated seven times when we talk about the laws of shor. One of them is for itself, obviously, and the other six are for these six categories: shor isha, the shor of a woman, shor isim, the shor of the orphan, Shor Trumpus, the trustee, Shor Hamidbar, a wild one, a wild ox, Shor Hektish, an ox belonging to the temple fund, Shor Hagershem, a family Yarshim, or the ox of a convert who dies without children. Okay, who die? Shor Hamidbar, Shor Hektish, Shor Hagershem, a family Yarshim, two women, a mess, the fish, and bilam. If there's no owner, the animal is exempt from capital punishment. Amr of Honor of Huna says, Poiter Hoyer of Yehuda, I feel Nogach will be safe Hektish. Nogach will be safe Hifkar. Yehuda says the animal is exempt from the death penalty, even in a scenario where the animal gored when it had an owner, and then he made it ownerless. Still exempt. Same thing with Hektish. If the animal gores and then he's makdash it, he, he donates to the temple fund, also the animal becomes owner. The animal is exempt. My, how do we know this? Because the mission gives two examples. Shor HaMidvur, Shor HaGer, Shemais, and Yarshim. An, a wild ox is the same as the ox of a convert who dies without inheritors. The ox is effectively ownerless. 
Shorger Shemais Mayne, who the Kim the Ain Yarsh or Havala Shor Hefker. The axe of a of a conifer who dies without inheritance. What is that? That's an axe of Hefker, the tonalis. So Hain of Shar Midbar, that's the same as wild ox. Hain of Shar Shar Ger Hames. The axe of a conifer who died, the Ain Yarsh doesn't have inheritors, is the same as a wild ox. Why does the mission give two categories? El Alav Hakamashmal, and it must be the mission's coming to tell me the follow as follows. Basically, um, the idea here is as follows. We have two examples of a wild ox. One is an ox that's inherently wild. It's a desert ox, right? It's from the wilderness. The other type of ox is an ox that became wild. It became ownerless. How did that happen? It belonged to a kind of one who passed away without kids. Now, what's the distinction between the two oxen? oxen? It must be the ox, the, the ox that was wild. That was always a wild ox. The ox of a... Of a convert that died, it must be that it, it, it gored while he was a convert. And then he died and became ownerless. And still Rabbi Yehuda exempts you. In other words, because if it gored after the guy died, it's, it's, it's just as ownerless as the ownerless, ownerless ox in the forest. So it must be that it gored when the, when the convert was still alive. And yet, and he, and he made it ownerless, and yet he still exempts him. We see from here that Yehuda exempts even if you make an ownerless after it has already gored. Tanya Nami Hachi, you have another Bryce that says similarly. Yes, so I can't of Yehuda. Moreover, Yehuda taught, I feel a Nagachlob Saif Hikdish, Nagachlob Saif Hifkar. If the animal gored and then he made it, he made it, he sanctified it, or Nagachlob Saif Hifkar, or he it gored and he made it ownerless, Potter, the owner is exempt. Shinemar is the first states, Buhu al Bibola Behemis. Okay, one second. The third wide line there, Rabbi. The second one. Okay. Okay. Um, one second. Okay, Shinera as follows. The verse states, Behuad Bibaolov. What does that mean? Behuad means it became a muad, right? Bibaolov. What does that mean? With its owner. And then it kills again, and then the animal stones. Says Rabbi Huda, the owner is a critical component at every stage. You have to have an owner from when the animal gores until the animal is brought before the courts. So the Mar addresses the technicality. The Mar says, Ugmar din loy you don't need the outcome of the court case. So in other words, the bringing in front of the court, that's just to litigate the question. The outcome, that's really the determining decision. Like we said before, if the if the animal, let's say the outcome of the court case is the animal will be stoned. At that moment, the animal becomes owner, becomes isuri hanal, meaning you cannot derive benefit from it, even if it's slaughtered. Sigmar so says you're right. Uh, Sigmar so the the asks, do you not need the maradin, the outcome of the court case? Vashar Yisakal, Gmaradin who? Talking about the execution of the animal, that is the conclusion of the court case. So Mara says, you're right. You need the uh, the the animal's killing, bringing it before the court, and the court outcome all has to be with the original owner owning the animal in order for the animal to be stoned. Okay. Says the Mishnah, an animal that was that was uh, being taken to be stoned. The Higdisha Bailov and the owner thought of a great idea. Why not donate it to the temple? Right? It's like the cars for kids. You know, yeah, this old car doesn't work. Yeah, you donate it. Right? How generous. Yeah. Shachdu, shachdu was sorry. What was that? No problem. You could still donate your car. It's so nice, but it you know it's been in the position of re of receiving less than ideal merchandise as a donation. Yeah, okay, listen, still appreciate it, I'm sure, but uh it's certainly, you know, it, it's how how convenient of the guy who has the ox about to be stoned to donate it. Yeah. 
It's an enemukdish. The sanctification doesn't work. The animal's still stone. Besari also. And you can't you cannot benefit from the flesh. Let's say that they were debating the question in court. And the owner said, I'm sick of this whole debate here. You know what? The animal's donated to Hektish. So Muktash, then then the sanctification works. Vim Now, presumably, as you might expect, the court, the uh, the temple trust fund is probably not going to want an animal that's killed four times. So the solution to this animal is probably to slaughter it. And if they do so, then uh, then the animal is permitted to be in. And that's because there was no outcome to the case before the animal was sanctified. Okay. Period. This is the first the first uh, item of the mission. Now we're going to get to a se- the second item of the mission. And a guy has a, a, a wild ox. The animal, the ox is actually owned by somebody, but it's it's a muad. It's pretty violent. Mosr al so he gives it to a free watchman, Ulashayelo to a borrower. Ulanaisi Sakhar, Ulasaikar. Naisi Sakhar is a paid watchman, Saikar is a renter. So the halacha is Nikhnasutachas Bailam. They all take the place of the owner. Muad Mishalam Nazik Shalom, Vitam Mishalam Khat Vitam Mishalam Khatsi Nezak. Um one second. If the animal is a muad, so then the shimer, the watchman, or the renter or the borrower take the place of the original owner. And if the animal's a muad, they have to pay full damages. The time of if it's a time, they pay half damages. We'll have to deal with this at length. Um, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll explain in just a moment. Okay. Put our bottom. The Bryce says, Shor shehemis, actually enigma dinai, mochoi mochor. Okay, the animal kills before the... You have you have a moor that kills somebody, or even a time that kills somebody. Before the outcome of the court case, you can sell it. You can sanctify it, and the sanctification is valid. <laughs> if, if Let's say you slaughter the animal before the outcome of the case, then you're, you're allowed to eat the flesh. Okay. Moreover, very interestingly, Okay, so you have an interesting scenario. An animal goes ahead and uh, an animal that's a tom, let's say, it could be a tom or it could be a mood, it doesn't make a difference. It goes out and gores to gores a person to death. So the court uh, quickly gets the owner involved and they, they set a time, a date, they're going to bring the animal in front of the court and they will kill the animal. So what did the guy do? The watchman quickly gave back the animal to the owner before it goes to court. So you can say, look, this is the animal you sent me to watch, and here it is. It's the fact that you can have it. Now, what about the fact that the court might execute it a day later? That has nothing to do with the owner. It's the same animal, right? You gave me an animal to watch. I'm giving you back an animal. Because at that point, the animal is considered a complete animal. You might have a threat that, it, that the court will execute it, but it's, it's the same animal that you borrowed, or the same animal that you were watching. Uh, it's the same thing. I took your car, committed a hit and run with it. Yeah, I'm giving it back to you. Not quite. Not quite. You you took my car. You you violated a bunch of laws. Yeah. Which had which put a uh, impound letter on it. Okay. Not no. I'm not, sorry. It it put a court case to threaten an impound. Okay. And then you gave it back to me. And then the court case was concluded, and they imp- they, they sent out a letter to impound the car. That's what's more likely. It's the same car. The car is not touched. It's exactly the same. The ox here is exactly the same. It's undamaged. It's nothing. It's exactly the same. Except there's a court case now considering whether to execute the ox. Okay. Okay. Mishnah and Mardinai. Once the court case concludes, then mach, that now the court case concluded the animal is going to be executed. So now the animal is worthless. It's isure hanol. You cannot derive benefit. And therefore, mocher, if you sold it, any mocher, the sale is not valid. You can't you can't sell some some something that's isure hanol. If you sanctified it, any muktish, it's not it doesn't it, it's not sanctified. Shachdu, you slaughtered it. Sorry, osir, the flesh is prohibited. Hechzira shemer lebeis ba'alov any muktish. You know the the uh, the car already has the letter that it's going to be impound, impounded. Then you can't give it back. It's too late. At this point, the animal has a letter on it that it's going to be killed. So therefore, it's not you can't you cannot return such an animal. Any muktish, it's not returned. Rabbi Yaakov says, Av Mishanim Mardina, Hoksu Shem Rabbi Spile of Moksar. Rabbi Yaakov says, No. Rabbi Yaakov says that you can return it even if it has a 
proclamation of death on its head. In other words, the axe is a core case whose outcome has been determined that it will be stoned. And um, you can a, a watchman can still give back the animal. It looks the same. It presumably is the same. So therefore, you can give it back. The Gemara says, Let's say this is the debate. The Rabban Savri ain't I'm going to be sure I know how Rachel Achel Fanecho. Rabbi Yaakov Savri, I'm going to be sure I know how Rachel Achel Fanecho. One second. A bit, um, the Kula Almo, uh, a little less than a quarter of the way down. Okay. okay so let a little less than a quarter of the way down. First word in line is the Kula. 45 days. 45 days. Okay, as follows. Let's say the debate here is Isur It's prohibited. You can't use it. You can't use it. Um, if you can't use it, then perhaps we should consider that this is a different. This is a different item. Let's say it's a different animal. Quite right. Quite so. It's an animal you can't use. You can't derive any benefit from it. Or do we say, ultimately speaking, nothing happened to the animal. It looks identical. So can you can a watchman say with regard to Yisurah and all something that's become prohibited? Can he say, um, this is exactly what you've given me, and here it is. I'm returning exactly what you've given me. I'm giving it back to you. So maybe that's the debate. So the Torah says that can't be the debate. Why? Amar Rabba says the Kulam Amar Yisurah and all Everyone agrees. Everyone could agree, at least, that Bisur and all you could say, uh, this, is, this is what I took from you. Here, here it is. The identical item is returned to you, even though now it's prohibited to derive benefit from it. Why? Because if not, they should disagree with regard to Chometz on Pesach. What's this? Hold on. As follows. Let's say, for example, I give you I give you chametz, right? And I tell you to watch the chametz. Comes Pesach time, and uh, you watch the chametz. Comes after Pesach. The chametz now is prohibited to derive benefit from. The Jew keeps chametz over Pesach. There's a prohibition to derive benefit from that chametz. Can you return to me? The, can you return to me the chametz and say, look, here I watch your chametz over Pesach. Here's your chametz. The answer is you could. Even though that comment is Yisur Hanoi, you cannot derive benefit from it, you still can return it to me. Because everybody agrees, you can say by, by Yisur Hanoi, Rachel Hanoi, it's the same item, you can return it. However, so what's the debate? Why do the rabbis say that the, the ox cannot be returned? One second. I'll explain a little bit. Chometz on Pesach, the Yisur Hanol happens on its own, right? By you uh, waiting over Pesach, that creates the prohibition of Yisur Hanol. That type of Yisur Hanol, everyone agrees. We say, you can return the item as is. However, over here, in our scenario, the owner participates in making the animal prohibited. Let's explain how that happens. It, can you execute an animal when, if the animal is not in court at its own court case? Okay, the Rabbon and Savri, the rabbis say, you can, only, um, you can only execute an ox if the ox was present while the discussion was taking place. Right, you need to give it an opportunity to defend itself. <laughs> Not quite, but but we'll see why in a second. We'll see that this is also learned from the laws of humans, right? A, hu a human who's in court, he has to be present in court. Similarly, does an ox have the same rule, even though presumably he, he's not going to have any uh, intelligent arguments, at least at least communicable arguments. Okay, so therefore the rabbi said the ox is to be present. To Amarle, the owner says to the watchman, "Iha darti If you would have returned it to me before the court case, have a 
I would have uh, hid the animal. And, there, and therefore, uh, because I would have hid the animal, the animal would never have been executed because the animal would have been hidden. They would not have been able to execute the animal because they, they need the animal to be present in court and they don't know where it is. What you did by bringing the animal to court was you made it impossible for me to, pr- to protect my animal from, from the outcome of, of, of becoming Yisur Hanal. So therefore, it's your fault that the animal went in front of court. And therefore, you cannot return to me the same animal. You got a summons to court. You got a summons to court, but you should have hid the animal. Uh, that's what I would have done. If you would have hid the animal, the animal would never have been able to be executed. So it's your fault the animal is prohibited now. If it's your fault, you cannot return to me the animal now that the outcome of the court has been decided. Okay, for Rabbi Yaakov, Safar, Rabbi Yaakov says, According to Rabbi Yaakov, the animal does not need to be present. It makes, makes no difference if the animal was in court or not. They would have concluded the court case without the animal present. So therefore, I can return to you the animal because Haresh Lach this happened on its own. I did not participate in creating, in making it prohibited to derive benefits. My time, Rabbanon, what's the reason of the rabbis? So the Gemara says, Ashori Yisakal Vagamba all of humans. Like we said previously, the animal is stoned and the owner also dies. What do we see from there? Kemisa Sabaylam Kachmisa Ashor. Just like the, the, the capital punishment for humans, so too is capital punishment for oxen. Ma Bailam, just like humans, Bifneim Afshar Bifanov. Just like humans, the court case must take place in front of them. They have to be present at their own court case. Afshar Bifanov, uh, also an ox, cannot be tried in absentia. It has to be present. Okay, Rabbi Yaakov. What about Rabbi Yaakov? Bishlam Abayalim Bnei Tainan Nino Elashar Bar Tainosu. Rabbi Yaakov says the most logical conclusion. What? What does a court case have to be? What does a human have to be present in his court case? Because maybe he'll think of an argument to, to save himself. But an, an an ox, you think he's going to have an argument? Presumably not. You could, in a certain sense, but the ox is going to win. He is not going to have an argument to defend himself in a court case. And therefore, there's no reason for him to be present. Okay, let's go briefly through the laws of Shomrim. Four types of Shomrim, right? Shomrim Chinam, Hashayal, Nesisachar, Vasachar. The proper way to organize this is to think of Shomrim Chinam as the least severe obligation. And Shayal is not is even more than a maximum obligation. Shayal really takes the place of the original owner, with only one exception. That exception is if the animal dies suddenly over the course of its normal work. So, for example, you have uh, you, you rent a tractor and the tractor dies. You know, it, not because of any negligence. It's the only exception. There's one more exception, which is a unique one, which is all of my We're not going to discuss that if we don't need to, because the whole thing is complicated. We'll get to discuss it more. I believe it comes up more in in uh, in um, Bavitzia. Okay. Basically, when you borrow something, you're you, you're fully obligated to return the item as is. Completely. There's no, there's no, it's not a law, it's not really a law of negligence. It's a critical distinction here. In other words, let's go the other way. Let's go to the lightest version, the least severe. You have a Shomer Chinam, right? Shomer Chinam, he accepts, he's a free watchman. You know, I'm going away. Can I, can I, put, can I, uh, can I park my car in your driveway? That's a Shomer Chinam. You know, your car has an alarm system. That sort of fulfills my obligation. I don't have to do anything to it. I don't have to put an offense around it. I don't have to make sure. Presumably, if I see the car was broken into, I'll call the police. That's sort of my minimal obligation. Okay. If the animal is broken into, it has nothing to do with me. I'm not, I've never accepted that obligation. Okay. If, 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 however, I'm negligent, I open the doors and I leave them wide open and a robber comes in. Okay, so then I was negligent. I failed to watch it as I was expected to. A shoyal is not is not liable for failing to watch the item. A shell is in the place of the original owner. A borrower takes the place of the owner. Even if there is a freak incident, there's, a, there's an earthquake, right, or a volcano, or a, some sort of ear, you know airplane crash right into it, something completely unexpected and unpredictable, the borrower has to repay the item. It's not, it's not so much that he's negligent for not watching it correctly, it's that he takes the place of the original owner. So if the original owner would have suffered a loss when a volcano erupted and destroyed his car, it, the um, the um, uh, the borrower has the same story. And then in the middle, we have Shemr, We'll get to the details more. Um, I believe is the debate. We'll get to it in a moment. 
Um, but a Seicher is like a Shemar Chinam, except that he has more responsibilities. You know, parking in the driveway is not, is not enough. A Seicher is a renter. He has to let it, lock it up in a garage. You know, he would be liable on, on a on, on a thievery or uh, or if the item is lost. You know, there's a certain amount, there's a certain higher level of responsibility he accepts, and that that would that would uh, that would make him liable in, that, in those circumstances. In an extreme event, like a, like an earthquake or a hurricane, he would be exempt from pun. He would be exempt from paying. Okay, Tanarabonon. So okay, so we said if you give the animal to a to a shimer, then the <laughs> the shimer takes the place of the original owner. Four people are, are in place of the original owner of Elohim, and these and they are Shomer Chinam, an unpaid watchman, Hashayel, a borrower, Nice Sacher, a Hasaycher, Nice Sacher is a paid watchman, Hasaycher is a renter. Hargu, let's say the animal killed Tamim, Tamim, the animals of Tam, the Harogan, Upturim and Akaifer. If the animal is a Tam, so then the, the then the animal is killed, and they are exempt. From paying kaifer because it was a tam, and they have to replenish the animal. They have to give the animal back to the original owner. Muadim, if if the animal is in wood, so then then still while the animal is in their domain, they're still watching the animal. The and we execute the animal. Umishalman is a kaifer, and we pay. And, and the the watchman has to pay kaifer. to make sure and they have to return the value of the axe to the original owner. Chutz mishemurchinam, with the exception of a shemurchinam, an unpaid watchman. Okay, so we'll have to see what's unique about an unpaid watchman. Amr hechidami. What's the story? Idinatre. If he was watching it, I feel the kulinami left through. If they were watching the animal, then they should all be exempt because they were watching it correctly. Vidaloynatre. If they weren't watching it, I feel shemurchinam nechayev. Then even a shemurchinam should have to watch it. it. Should be liable. So Amri, Amri, the resolution is hachmaiskinam. What are we talking about? He watched it a low-level watching. So he put it behind a chain link fence, let's say, and didn't put barbed wire or, or an electric uh, an electric barrier in between. Okay. A an unpaid watchman, he's responsible for the minimal level of watching. Presumably a chain, a chain link fence fulfills this obligation. However, if you're a borrower or if you're a uh, a renter, then you should also put up an electric fence. You know, maybe put barbed wire on top or something like that. Okay. So Amri Kaman, let's try to figure out who are we talking to? Who, who are we talking about? Okay. Ikareb Meir. One second. The Amar, Seicher Kashem Rechinim Dami. Okay, so now there are really two components here. To each of these opinions, the Gemara is sort of making a, a, a problem here. There's two opinions from Meir and Rabbi Yehuda. Each of them holds two different two different ideas. So the first idea of Rameir, which is not mentioned in the Gemara, but it's brought down in the Mishnah, Rameir says that a muad can be watched with a chain link fence. Muad only requires minimal level of watching. Chain link fence works. A muad. And remember, we spoke about this in the past. Is a muad is it sagile b'shmir pusa or does it require shmir meula? It, this could be one of the one of the areas where a tam is actually more severe than a muad, where a tam requires shmir meulo, that would be the electric wire, and a muad requires shmir, only shmir klusa, something like a chain, a chain link fence. Okay. Again, so Rameir says Rameir says that a muad works with shmir klusa, small level of watching. Okay, and also he says the Omar at top of forty five b, the Omar seicher kashemachinam dami. He says that a renter has the same status as a shemachinam as a watchman. So if that's the case. Listen, it should be with the exception of a shemarchinam and a renter. And if you go with Rabbi Yehuda, the Amr Seicher Kanaisi Sacher, he says that a Seicher is like a paid watchman, meaning that he has to do it, he has to watch at a higher level. So Nisni Chutzmi Shemarchinam. One second. One second. It should say Chutz Mishemachinam that Shemachinam is, is an exception with regard to a tam, to a non-violent animal, because that requires a Shemir Meula. However, the Kulan Bimuadim Tur, Lenin Kaifer, 
But with regard to Mu'a, they're all exempt from Kaifer. Why? Because they put up the chain link fence. In other words, the Shem Rechinim is the only is the only area where, you, again, according to according to, in a, if if we're going with the opinion that says that a Mu'a requires Shmir Pusa, chain link fence, let's say, and a and a Tam requires Shmir Mu'a, right, which is the electric wire. So now, which Shemer stands in between Tam and Mu'a? The answer is Shem Rechinam. Shem Rechinam fulfills his obligation by putting the chain-link fence, <clears throat> even if the animal requires a Shemer Mu'ullah. So in that case, he would say that all, that, that Noitzi Sachar HaSachar V'Hashayel, they are all chayef to pay. Uh, in a case of, it, they, they, they would all be chayef to pay. In a case where Shem Rechinam would be exempt to pay. Because the Shem Rechinam does not have the obligation of Shemer Mu'ullah, only Shemer Pusa. A low-level Shemirah. Right, you follow? Mm-hmm. So if nice, if Seicher is like Shem Rechinam, so then we have two exceptions, Shem Rechinam and, Seich, and, and Seicher. If Seicher is like a nice Seicher, meaning he has to do a Shemir and Ma'ula, a good watching, so then Shem Rechinam, there's a difference between Tam and Mu'ad. Shem Rechinam, Tam is exempt because he fulfills the obligation with the chain link fence, even though everybody else is obligated to put on the, the concertina wire the, 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 or the electric wire. However, with regard to Mu'ad, everybody's exempt. Because everybody fulfilled their obligation by putting by by putting the guy putting the animal behind the chain link fence. Together? Yeah. So Amr Vuna Barkin, no Hamani Rebelazar he. We're going with the opinion of Rebelazar. Okay. The Amar Ainla Shmira El Sakit. Rebelazar says the only way to watch an animal is with a knife. That means to slaughter means to slaughter it. Okay. Uh, he holds that a Seicher is like a nice Seicher. Okay, if this is the case, let's go, let's review. So Seicher is like a nice Seicher, meaning all three categories, Seicher, nice Seicher, Shail, all have to do with Shemir and Ma'ula, right? And Shemir Chinam is the only one that stands sort of in between. Regardless of whether the animals are Tam or a Muad, a Shemir Chinam would be exempt if he puts the chain link fence. And everybody else will be chayev because their only way to watch it, watch the animal is basically to kill it. In other words, it's never enough. It's never enough. They're always obligated. They're always liable. Good? Okay, one second. Okay. Abaya Abaya Omar Abaya says, Oilam Kur Mayor. We could be going according to Mayor. Could the Machlef Rabba Baravua and like uh, Rabba Ravua switched it around? The Tani Seicher, the Tani Seicher, Ketsim Shalom, Remeyer Imak Shemer Sachar, for Behuda Imak Shemer Chinam. In other words, according to this version of the Brysa, Rabba Ravua's version of the Brysa, so that actually was an extra line to the Brysa, and that and they debated what is the status of a Seicher. Is it like a Shemer Chinam or is it like a, a nice Sachar? So Remeyer says, Kishem Rosachar, for Behuda Imak Shemer Chinam. Omar Belazer, Belazer says, Masu Shemer Eil Shemer Chinam, he handed his axe to a, an unpaid watchman. Hizik, the axe to damage, Chayev. Then, he, then the Shemachinim has to pay. Huzak, if the animal was damaged, Potter. Then the Shemachinim is exempt. So Amri Hechidami, what's the scenario? Eid the Kabul Allah Shmir Sazakav, Afilu Huzik Namil Chayev. Eid the Lai Kabul Allah Shmir Sazakav, Afilu Hizik Namil Potter. One second. If the guy if the guy accepts the responsibility with regard to damages, then it's a two-way street. He's responsible to make sure the animal doesn't damage and isn't damaged. And if he doesn't want that responsibility, then the both the, then he's not responsible not that the animal shouldn't damage, nor that it shouldn't be damaged. So why is there why is it sort of in between? Why is it that he's exempt if the animal's damaged, but liable if the, the animal damages? Right? Why is it why is there a difference between if the animal is a victim or an oppressor? An, an, an aggressor is a better word. Why is he exempt from from its vic, its victimhood, but liable for its aggression? So the Gemara says, It's he did accept the responsibility of damaging. He recognized the animal was a violent animal. So, so the, the normal scenario is he accepted that this animal will not go ahead and damage others. 
to also the Achrinim Masculine of the day, Loy Asakadaita. But he did not accept the responsibility that other animals would damage it. Yeah, in other words, in other words, because he because this animal looks like it's a violent animal, it didn't occur to him that it actually might end up as the victim. Therefore, he never accepted that responsibility. Okay. See you tomorrow. Right. Have a great day.